What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's Lumix Live. Uh, obviously, it has been an insanely busy week for Panasonic Lumix over here, and I am so thrilled so many of you joined us on uh, the 25th for the announcement of the GH5 Mark II, and I'm sure a vast majority of you were kind of maybe a little happy about the uh, development announcement of that other camera that we kind of came out with, you know, the one that we've been not able to really say the name of. Oh, that's right, yeah, the GH6. So we've got a, a whole lot of information to cover today. Uh, I want to first start out by sending a shout out to Scott Rubin, who sent us an email over at lumixlive at us.panasonic.com with a laundry list of questions that uh, I'm sure a ton of these questions are going to be pretty relevant to a lot of the uh, the users out there that are maybe interested in the GH5 Mark II and want to have maybe a little bit more of an understanding of what the camera is going to be able to give you uh, and really just be able to, you know, get you guys as much kind of clarity as to why this camera exists, why we have this model out. Uh, and why we announced it at the same time that we know that we've got a GH6 coming by the end of the year. Uh, I know there has been a ton of people questioning our decision on that and why we would do it and what's the point of this camera. So hopefully by the end of this stream you have maybe a better understanding of what, what our idea is. Um, if this is the first time you have ever joined Lumix Live, welcome. Uh, these are the weekly live streams that we do with... Uh, Primarily, usually just myself and maybe one or two other guests uh, talking about all kinds of things from technology, like we're going to really kind of focus on today uh, and features, as well as uh, talking with a ton of filmmakers, creatives in the industry to just kind of broaden everyone's understanding of what's going on out in the uh, photographic and, fo and uh, video, video world. Wow. It's been a long day. I've had to talk a whole lot on camera this week, so surprised I'm still able to get through this and still have kind of a voice. Uh, if you have questions that you want me to address during the stream, make sure to tag at Lumix cameras before your question like uh, Alan has done uh, in the chat already. Uh, and that just helps me see it on this side so that I can get through it and make sure that I don't miss a ton of questions. I know that we, you know, every once in a while I may miss a couple of questions, but... We'll always try to get to as many of them as we can. Um, I also want to remind everybody that uh, if you're in the U.S. and even if you're in a number of other countries out there, we have the Lumix Pro Services uh, system that is in place in a number of regions across the globe. In the United States, we have two tiers here. We have the red tier and the platinum tier. Uh, these are the service and the support programs that are created. The red tier is free. It's Basically open up to anybody that wants to get into this platform. You just register in and get yourself the uh, uh, benefits that are there, like the three-year warranty, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then if you are a more demanding user, we have the Platinum series of our support system. The Platinum series still gets you that three-year warranty, all that fun stuff that comes with it, but you get added benefits. You get two-day turnaround time on repairs. You get... Uh, expedited shipping both ways uh, that's covered. You get a welcome kit that's got a really sick peak design sling strap that's customized with the Lumix Pro Service logo. You get 20% out of uh, for out of warranty repairs, you know, stuff if you happen to like drop your camera or lens, stuff like that. You get lens cleanings, sensor cleanings, all that kind of fun stuff. So it is an awesome system to get into. And Across the, the globe, there are different uh, things happening when you take a look and may decide that you want to pre-order a GH5 Mark II if you find after this session that it fits into your needs. So definitely check all of your local regions to see what kind of programs are available or what kind of benefits are available for pre-ordering. Uh, I know in the U.S. we've got a tie-in with the Lumix Pro service platform. I know some other regions I think are uh, either lenses or batteries, but check with your local region. There's some pretty cool promotions going on. So with that, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Looking through the questions, I just saw uh, from Ruckus TV, the stream audio scared me. I left the, the tab open an hour ago and all of a sudden audio just came in. Well, hopefully I didn't make you spill anything if you were drinking uh, any kind of liquid, water, coffee, whatever. I'm not sure what time it is around with you guys. It's about one o'clock here in Central Texas. So or East, yeah, that's Austin. 
So let's take a look at some of the quick questions first uh, before we jump into actually walking through the GH5 Mark II and talking about all the differences here. So first question that I see here that has come up uh, is from Alan. It says, good evening from Wales. Well, good evening. Uh, any news on release date for the S-Series Fantasy Collection? I assume you're meaning the 1.8 lenses. Uh, I don't have any information yet, uh, but definitely keep your ear to all of our social channels. Um, hopefully, we'll have some inf more information to share with you guys very soon. Uh, Alan Lloyds is asking, Edinburgh, hey, awesome. Uh, we'll get my question in early. Do you know if the fantastic GH5 Mark II RTMP uh, push streaming will come to the BGH1. I'm going to cover that in a little bit. I'm not sure if the BGH1 is going to get the exact same system there, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Ulrich is asking, I think I pronounced that right, uh, two early questions from, Ger uh, from Germany. Uh, nobody talks about AF at VFR before recording on the GH5 Mark II, and there is a C4 on top of the wheel. Are there any... Are <laughs> Are there also more storage places? So I will talk about that stuff. So, all right. We got some good questions that I actually already have the, the list of questions here for. Liam's asking, why bother with a GH5 Mark II over a competitor camera? Um, I don't like always calling out competitor camera names there. Um, we're going to get into that very specifically, um, where this camera fits in the lineup and hopefully clear up some some understanding of where this one sits, where the GH6 is going to sit in the lineup, uh, to kind of help clarify some of that stuff. Uh, let's see here. Is there an estimated price of the GH6? Uh, I can get that one out of the way right now. Uh, we're talking about somewhere around $2,500 US. Uh, will Panasonic make Vlog L free for the GH5? Uh I don't think so. Um, that camera is relatively very old at this point. I mean, in the grand scheme of technology. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't believe so. Uh, but the a lot of the updates that we're going to talk about are why we ended up coming out with the new model and why Vlog is in, included in the new uh, the new version. Uh, would the GH6 new sensor improve AF noticeably? Is phase detect AF in the future at all? I. Uh, I can't talk about any of the new sensor tech or anything in the new sensor or the new processor other than what we just announced, that it is a new sensor and it is a new processor. Um, so you're just going to have to kind of wait and see. Uh, can we get some more news on the upcoming firmware updates for the GH5 II, the GH5S, and the G9? Yes, we can. We're actually going to talk about that a lot as well. Um, can't pronounce this name. Hey, Sean, does the new linear focus work on other lenses than the fancy 1.7 zooms? Uh, regards from York, England. Uh, yes, and I actually have a, uh, a list of what lenses are actually going to work. Uh, lenses will need a firmware update, uh, which will come relatively soon. Uh, so the lenses that are going to be on the list, I just have to remember to actually open up that uh, PowerPoint that I have that, well, has that information so I don't uh, misquote anything to people. Because I've done that before, and I feel like an idiot when I do it. Uh, cool. So, any other quick questions that are dropping out here before we go into what I got prepared? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Could there be... Okay, this one doesn't have the at Lumix cameras. Remember to tag at Lumix cameras so I can see it. Uh, could there be raw over HDMI output coming via firmware update for the GH5 Mark II? Um... I do not know. I don't believe so. However, I've become a person that says never say never uh, with this stuff. There's obviously, there's no, nothing I can say on here that would be a commitment uh, on future things, but we know that it's something that we've asked for uh, to see if it's something that can be done, and if it would be, if it can be done, it would have to fit into our quality standards that we would set. Um, let's see here. FCS, does the GH5 Mark II include live view capture for photos? I believe you're uh, referencing like our live view composite for that we have on the S5 and like the G95 and cameras like that. Uh, it does, but we're going to, there's a little caveat to that for the current time being. 
Jacob asks, do you guys ever talk about color science and better understanding of V-Log and the other color profiles editing with them? Thank you. Uh, it is a very specific uh, topic that I do want to cover on Lumix Live. Uh, it's just been a little more complicated to get the right group of people together all at the same time to have an actual good un like conversation that I think would actually be beneficial to everybody. Um, ideally, I want to get someone from outside of Lumix who, you know, may work in, in you know, as a colorist and kind of help get you guys more information about what Vlog is, the difference between Vlog and Vlog L, which is something that we've covered before numerous times, um, and demystify some of what goes on between all the cameras. Uh, can the service department convert a GH5 to a Mark II? Uh, unfortunately, no. I, I'm like uh, about 99.999% sure no. Uh, there are a, a number of internal hardware differences uh, between the two cameras. Uh, are you continuing to introduce new cameras? Where does that leave people who are happy with their old cameras? Oh, as you continue to introduce new cameras, where does that leave people who are happy with their older cameras, like a GH4 and a G9? Uh, well, the G9 is getting a, a pretty sick update uh, very soon, actually. Um, GS, GH5 2, linear focus. Can you demonstrate this live on the stream? Uh, I planned to, but I don't have uh, my 12 to 60 that has the current firmware version for it. Uh, but we have shown it before on the... Uh, S-series cameras, it's the same thing that's set up there, so uh, I can hook up my uh, S5 and we can show you what the system's going to look like, because it's identical to those cameras. Um, will the GH6 replace the G9 as a flagship photo camera also? Uh, no, uh, but they're, like, there's so much more information that is going to come out about the GH6 over time. Uh, that I encourage everyone to kind of, I know it's tough, wait a little bit longer, we're almost there, um, to get a lot more clarity on that camera. Uh, like we said, there's a big firmware, or a relatively big firmware update for the G9. The G9's gotten a ton of big firmware updates over its lifetime, lifetime so far. Uh, is there any estimate when more info will come out about the GH6? I do not have that information, uh, so I apologize. Are those Lumix shirts you're wearing available to purchase? Ah, Unfortunately, no. Um, I would love if we got into the apparel business. That's a joke. I would not. Uh, but we, when we were doing trade shows, like when we were actually able to be at trade shows, we used to have a lot of these things that we would give out to people that would come to the booth. So who knows? As trade shows start to come back, as in-person events start to come back, who knows? Maybe we'll have stuff like that. And we'll have stickers, all that kind of fun swag that everyone loves to get. Um, let's see here. Does the GH5 have improved IBIS over... Uh, GH5 Mark II have improved IBIS over the GH5? Yes, it does, and I'm going to show you. Uh, at some time in the future, can you invite an engineer to discuss technical aspects? We are working on that right now. Um, obviously, we are a Japanese company, so a lot of times we run into maybe some language barriers uh, to make sure everyone can understand and that our guest can understand uh, the questions that we're asking as well and vice versa. Uh, but it is something that we have toyed around with trying to get uh, scheduled together. But at the same time, our engineers are usually very, very busy. So it's also a matter of if we can get scheduling to work up right. Uh, maybe we can get a recorded interview, uh, but we, it's, it's uh, definitely something we've, uh, we've wanted to take a look at doing. Will the GH5 receive an update to allow linear focus? I do not believe so because I believe the linear focus uh, control and everything that the how the system works I believe is part of one of the reasons why the firmware update or the uh, processor update in the GH5 Mark II was required. Um, we've got a pretty good long-standing reputation of updating uh, the flagship cameras, so if if something were able to be done, I'm sure we would have really looked to see. Is it something that's possible, or does it tax the system too much, uh, or does it have all the sensors required to do it? So, fortunately, I don't think it's going to be able to come to a GH5, but again, never say never. Uh, just know that the GH5 Mark II has it. 
Uh, is Vlog true cinema gamut, or is it flattened to Rec 2020 or 709? Uh, curious to know the gamut behind it. Uh, it depends on the camera that you're working on. Vlog L, um, in, say, like, the BGH1, which is the camera we use to broadcast these events, uh, that is a Netflix-approved, or, uh, Netflix Post Technology Alliance, I have to make sure I get that right, uh, approved camera for ACAM use in full productions. Um, V-Log and the, uh, color space on that camera are perfectly set for, for, you know, cinema broadcast. Um, the GH5S is, I believe, very, very similar to the BGH1, just some slight differences due to hardware and tuning and that kind of stuff that goes on between, uh, updates and cameras. So there's some little bit of a difference there. I uh, Truthfully, I have not tested this camera enough yet uh, with the Vlog L profile that's in here. It does have a little bit more dynamic range than the original GH5, uh, but I don't know if the um, gamut has changed. When you look at the full frame cameras that are Vlog V gamut, V gamut is much greater than Rec 2020 as far as its its gamut. Uh, so you're well past what those ranges are and why it's so easy to convert over to an ACES workflow. Uh, Christopher asks here, do any of the firmware updates for the G9 feature live composite compatibility? I, there is nothing in the update for live view composite. Um, we have asked, I know I have asked the thing that I haven't been able to get an answer about with is whether or not it is a, uh, whether or not there is something with the sensor or the processor. However, the one thing I will say is that while the GH5 Mark II will be getting live view composite, it is going to come as a firmware update. So it's not something that's available right now at launch. It's not something that I can show you uh, on this camera, at least. I can show you on like a G95 or uh, an S-series camera, or an S5, actually. Uh, so I don't have enough information to answer whether or not the G9 is capable of doing it, whether it can get a firmware update for it. But um, we can hope uh, everything that you guys ever ask in here does get seen by our engineers and our team in Japan. So uh, know that if you're asking it, they're seeing it. So, um, all right. Uh, cool on these questions. Uh, Liam's question here, why release a GH6 a few months later just to replace a GH5 Mark II? That brings us right into kind of the the, the core of what I wanted to talk about today. So... We get this question, or we, we have gotten this question a lot since we, we made the announcement a couple of days ago, two days ago. Um, hopefully, for those of you that have been joining us over the last year um, for these events and have been following Panasonic for a very long time, hopefully it's, it's become maybe a little clearer that, you know, we... When we look at camera development, development, and when we look at what kinds of directions are going to work best for the, the platforms, whether we're talking Micro Four Thirds or Full Frame S Series, a lot of it comes down to making sure that we've got options and features that fit a, a wide variety of use cases out in the field. And each different model typically has a kind of subset of those features that it really pushes hard in and excels in. Uh, when we look at something like the GH5 Mark II, we know that the vast majority of you out there have been waiting incredibly patiently for the GH6. And knowing that, kind of really informs that, you know, if we just came out with a GH5 Mark II and said, hey, Here's the new camera. There you go. Um, we know that that's not what maybe necessarily a lot of the patiently waiting GH5, uh, current GH5 owners, uh, you know, we're really looking for as far as an update. And historically, when you look at Panasonic, we're not updating cameras just for, uh, you know, hey, here's a, a new name on it. Uh, we're going to maybe take this feature off that camera or, you know, remove a viewfinder or, you know, Put a you know change the screen on it or something like that. We're not going to do small little upgrades like that to a camera. Um, it doesn't really help any of us with those kinds of updates. So looking at it, it makes sense for us to say you know look we know that the GH6 is going to come and it is going to be a majorly different category camera than what you see in the GH5 and the GH5 Mark II right now. 
just some of the specs that we've already released about the camera, you know, 5.7K 60P, that's like the highest combination of resolution and frame rate in this category. Um, it's it's going to be a different animal, and that's about as much as I can say about the camera. But when it comes to the GH5 Mark II, the reason this camera even came out is that the GH5 came out in 2017. It started shipping in 2017. We announced it in 2016. And what that basically means is that the hardware that this camera was built on, or the original version was built on, is pretty old these days by comparison, even within our own lineup. And you eventually hit a wall where development past this either becomes too taxing on the equipment that's in it, uh, or you're not getting any kind of you know viable gain out of out of an update to a camera. So you end up being forced to have to basically do a hardware update. So it gave us the perfect platform to say, okay, look, we've got the new Venus engine. We have the new update that we've been using in, you know, the S1H, the S5, the BGH1. It gave us a lot more control. It gave us more capabilities in the camera. Uh, and being able to take that, get it onto the GH5 platform while still keeping the chassis identical meant that we can still provide updates to users of this particular platform for much longer now because we've got more headroom for us to work with. And then on top of that, we, again, we know that you guys want a GH6. That's why we did the development announcement. We, it's always been been the goal is we're going to announce both at the same time. We announced the new uh, 20 to 50 or 25 to 50 millimeter uh, F1.7 that's coming out. So we, we knew that this whole package is what everyone's really been kind of wanting. This one, it allows us more longevity in this platform. Like I said, for those that want to be able to use the same cages, the same underwater housings, the same overall platform, but you know you want to get something that's going to have more time that it can have firmware updates, more development, that kind of stuff. That's where this camera came from. And then add into the fact that the live streaming functionality that the camera has is a first of its type in these kinds of cameras. Now, we know some other cameras out there, smaller little ones, have been able to do some sort of live streaming, but our way of doing it uh, really pushes that envelope forward. And basically, yeah, it, it, it allows us to be able to just extend all of this and keep more options out there. Knowing that the GH6 is going to be targeting around a $2,500 price point, this camera coming in at $1,700 or $1,699 in the U.S. means that you have a sub-$2,000 option that's a GH5 platform. It's a great way into the GH5, especially when the inevitability comes and the GH5, the classic one, gets discontinued. You still have a solid option in there, and we're able to do this in a modern current release at a lower price than when the original GH5 was released to begin with. So there's a lot of benefits that have um, added on here. So um, before I go to the next point, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, Trinity Media, is the GH6 release one camera or a series of cameras? Um, no comment on that one. Um, just know that we're releasing a GH6. Uh, G95 question here, if allowed. Of course it's allowed. Does it have Venus X and any idea if it's going to have firmware updates? Cheers. I don't 100% know exactly which Venus engine is in that camera. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at the actual tech specs of that camera. Um, I do have one and I do like shooting with it. I, so I don't, I can't really comment on whether or not we're going to have firmware updates for it. So I, I apologize. Um, but, but, but other than saving money on a purchase, why would I even want a GH5 Mark II instead of a GH6? All right, so let's get to that exact point. So between the two different cameras here, right, you've got a GH5 Mark II that is designed to basically take the baseline of a GH5 and bring it another step up. The GH6 is going to be like a massive leap forward. So we know that the GH5, when that came out, is, you know, is and was one of the most forward-thinking and groundbreaking cameras of its time. Uh, our GH flagship series cameras, the, the top tier of that is going to always kind of carry that logic forward. So 
I there's a huge gap between what these cameras are going to do. So let's actually go in and take a look at some of the capabilities that the GH5 Mark II has here. So it would help if I wasn't blocking my face on this. So one of the first things that we kind of did with the GH5 Mark II is we gave the entire system a big refresh internally. Obviously, not just hardware, but even software-wise. Um, there, there is a certain thing in quality of life with a camera when you start looking at, you know, how easy is it to use? If you're someone who's got a GH5 and then you've also got, say, an S1H or you've got an S5 and you're trying to get them both uh, in your workflow... There's a lot to be said about having similar menus, similar layouts, similar controls. So that's one of the things that we go with on the Mark II. So one of the first things you'll notice is that the menu's totally redesigned on a GH5 Mark II. It is the current uh, you know, S5, S-series menu uh, system that we have. It's the same menu that we've done on the G100. Uh, it's the same menu that you see in, obviously, the S5, the BGH-1, if you've got an external monitor attached to it, although the BGH-1 is still a slight hybrid of it. So, you get a lot more, you know, kind of just general control uh, and, and layout that's incredibly familiar. Even things uh, as simple as the re uh, record quality my list now being added into the camera. So, since you have so many different recording options available in these cameras, you've now got that carryover into this as well. You've got the whole carryover, the fact that the anamorphic functionality or the open gate shooting is built right into the rec menu. You don't have to go back out into a separate menu option, turn anamorphic shooting on, and then, you know, pick which mode you're in. It's all consolidated into one area. So that makes it a lot easier of a camera to actually kind of navigate with and get yourself set up. Uh, that display filtering that we were talking about. So you have the ability to say, okay, I want 6K anamorphic 30P. Well, actually, we'll do 24P because I know everyone loves 24 frame. I can do add to my list, add it here. If I know that I'm going to be shooting, say, Cinema 4K 60P in 420 10-bit, since that's one of the new differences here, I can come in here and I can add that to my list as well. Then now what you'll see is under that My Record list, it's just the options that you want to, to see for your particular you know, shooting style. So it makes that whole process a lot easier. One of the other really nice advantages, um, anyone that has shot in 4K anamorphic or 6K anamorphic on a GH5, you know that if you're trying to use an external monitor with, the, with that particular camera and because of that processor you know that you have the disadvantage on the older platform that you can only monitor 6K anamorphic while you're not rolling. Once you click the record button, you see that the display goes black on the outside, so it can't output at the same time. Well, the GH5 Mark II, now because we're working on that newer processor and it's the whole new system that we're working with in the S-series cameras, I can have... <clears throat> uh, 6K anamorphic setup on my camera. I can have myself ready to shoot like that while still being able to say, I want my view and then I want to tap record, be able to record on the camera and still have that image signal being sent out to a larger monitor for either focus checking, stuff like that. Um, to note though, this is the same that you see with um, the other cameras. So when you're shooting in any of the anamorphic modes and whoop, when you're shooting in any of the anamorphic modes and you're sending that video feed out over HDMI, it is taking that four by three aspect ratio image and putting it within a 3840 by 2160 frame. So if you were to record on something like, you know, an external monitor, I just grabbed the video assist cause it's within reach. Um, if you're recording out to an external monitor, that's going to be 3840 by 2160 in whatever frame rate you've chosen. You're not going to get the full 6K. That's the advantage of using something like the BGH-1 or an S1H or even an S5 where they can do raw over HDMI. So that's a, a kind of a bigger difference that you'll see there. 
Uh, let's see, questions that have come in. I see a couple of them have come in uh, and see if anything's related to this particular point. Um, do I still need to reboot between PAL and NTSC? Uh, that's a good question. I have not checked it on this one. With the original GH5, if you wanted to change between NTSC and PAL, you do have to reboot. Uh, same on the GH5 Mark II. So it's a little different than the other... Uh, than, well, yeah, no, that's the, that's the way it typically has to be done in this. It's not the same version that you see in like an S5 or an S1, where you can just select NTSC or PAL. Uh, and the reason for that, too, is that the GH5 Mark II does also support... Cinema 24 hertz, so you're going to be able to shoot in an actual 24 frame per second, not 2398. So, uh, yes, yeah, so the camera does have to reboot if you're going to change that. Let's see here. Uh, does the GH5 Mark II have HEVC for 4K 30p or 24p 10 bit? The specs don't show uh, from what I can see. So, with the GH5 Mark II, you will have if you want. 4K, let's see here, you said 4K, 24 frame, 10 bit. 4K, 24 frame, 10 bit is going to be, so Cinema 4K, 24P, 10 bit is uh, H.264. Uh, yeah, so 24 frame is going to be 422 10 bit. Uh, easy way to see is on our cameras, if you see 420 10 bit, uh, that is typically going to be an HEVC codec. 422 10-bit is going to be MP um, H.264. So no HEVC in 4K uh, 24 frame 10-bit. Uh, with the GH5 too, you mentioned an improvement in dynamic range over the GH5. Do you know by how much of an improvement? Yes. So with the GH5 Mark II, we're seeing a third of a stop increase in dynamic range. And a lot of that comes down to some of the stuff that we've learned with the sensor, with the processor, what we can do with the log profile uh, over the last couple of years. So it gets, um, it has the slight tweak to the V-Log profile. Uh, Chief says, HEVC 2.0 spec has 422 in it. Yes, I know it does. Um, show me a computer that can easily actually work with 422 10-bit HEVC footage. Um, uh, it's specs are one thing when you see a new spec come out uh, or like an updated delivery uh, compression, things like that. It's a totally different thing when you look at what what average person's computer hardware is actually able to work with those files. Uh, very few are able to work with anything uh, outside of the 420 10-bit because that is the HEVC standard is 420 10-bit. That's why it. That's what's used for delivery with, say, like Netflix or uh, really anything that's HEVC delivered for HDR. That's why it's four two zero ten bit. Um, ba, 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 it's here. Uh, okay, cool. So we talked about you know obviously some of the rec quality things here. You have time code uh, on this camera now. Point to remember with the GH5 and the GH5 Mark II is that it is timecode out. Uh, so you're able to trigger external recorders with it, but it's not like a GH5S or a uh, S1H that allows you to do um, jam sync. So it's, an eight, it's a timecode out for like triggering and stuff like that. Uh, so you have that option. Uh, quick tip for those that have not done it, if you are, if you do put an HDMI recorder on this and you want to be able to trigger that recorder, you have to make sure you, you turn HDMI timecode output on, and then you have to go to the HDMI rec output menu, which, uh, watch, it's going to take me forever to find it, even though I know exactly where it is. Then you have to make sure that you turn HDMI recording control on as well. Those two pieces are needed to make sure that you're able to trigger your external recorder. We get that question a lot. Um, all right, so let's go into some of the questions that Scott had asked here. So can you use the GH5 Mark II as a standard webcam via USB? If so, will it have video and audio, unlike when using Lumix webcam software, which is video only? So the camera is compatible with the Lumix webcam software. Uh, there might need to be an update. I'm not 100% sure. I've plugged it in and it works. Um, so the site just might not be updated to say that it's supported there until it ships, which is 
fairly common. Uh, but it is the same platform. That that way of sending video out uh, over USB for 720p uh, webcam usage uh, isn't going to uh, send audio as well. That's really where the wireless streaming kind of takes that that major step forward if you're looking to do streaming and not necessarily webcam. So uh, as far as webcam goes, if you know that you want video and audio at the same time, using a capture card is still a really good option. Um, they've gotten some fairly, uh, fairly, they've gotten fairly inexpensive over the last year. Let's see here. Uh, the wired streaming that's planned for the future. There are no RJ45 Ethernet ports on the camera. Will you sell an adapter of some kind? Uh, so, very good eyes. There is no uh, LAN connector on this. So, for those that don't know what an RJ45 connector is, it's the LAN port that you see on a router or, you know, switch or computer. Um, I don't have a 100% confirmation on this. Uh, this is what Matt Frazier and I have been kind of understanding as we've been, uh, you know, kind of learning about the camera, getting ready so that we can educate everyone on it. I believe it's going to be a USB-C to uh, RJ45 adapter that you'll be able to use. Uh, no clue or point yet as to whether or not this is going to be something that we sell or if it's going to be something that a third-party adapter would be able to work with. Um, the goal with that uh, is that in a future firmware update, you're going to be able to do RTSP. Uh, streaming or RTP streaming. So if you've seen what we've done with the BGH1 box camera, that allows us to do, uh, the BGH1 box camera allows us to do uh, 4K 60p streaming in either HEVC or H.264 compression as a video feed, which also compiles audio with it as well. Uh, we haven't released what any of the actual uh, bit rates or resolutions are going to be for the RT, uh, RTP, RTSP on the GH5 Mark II yet, uh, so I don't know what they're going to be, uh, but you're going to have similar functionality in the concept of it. Uh, and then there is also going to be the firmware update, which allows you to uh, connect USB-C direct into, say, your mobile device and use its tethered uh, internet connection between the two instead of using Wi-Fi uh, for live streaming. So that gets you a more robust uh, connectivity there. Uh, and we'll have more information about that as we get closer to the firmware update released for that. Uh, John's asking, will the GH5S receive the linear focus via update? I do not know. I don't think so. Um, it, it's something that I know we've been asking with them with, but, you know, obviously during the announcement and during the release of a product, usually it's kind of just a, this is what we got to focus on right now. Give us a little bit and then we'll, we'll figure out. But uh, questions like that, I've said it before, this stuff gets uh, recorded and uh, everyone in Japan sees it. So uh, bu -bu -bu. does the GH5 Mark II allow wireless tether for photos to Lightroom to replace USB tethering? Uh, it does, but not in necessarily the way that I think you would think it would work. Um, Lumix cameras, and this is not just the GH5 Mark II, uh, even our G100 can do this. In the wireless settings, so for Wi-Fi, you can set it up to send files directly to a PC. And by PC, we basically mean you can send it to a desktop computer if you want. You have to set up a local profile if you're on a Windows computer. You can't use a Windows login that's linked to your Windows account. You can also be able to... Um, you're also able to send your photos to, like, a NAS. So I have, I have a little NAS here that I can be able to set up with the credentials that I have for that and have it send stills, uh, raw and JPEG, over into uh, the the NAS there, and then I have Lightroom or Capture One just watch a folder and import them there. Um, let's see here. It's beginning to sound like most of the advances pertain to video um, and its settings. What about advances for stills photography? Okay, fair point. So with the GH5 Mark II, we are also coming out with the firmware update for Live Composite. Live Composite is very much a stills photography um, feature and function there. One of the things to remember is that from, from the photography standpoint, there are, there are always things that obviously, you know, we can try to improve, um, but a lot of it these days is coming down to more experience. Um, you know, getting yourself 
maybe a better way to capture images, a more efficient way to capture images. Um, so things like Live View Composite for astrophotographers, for people who do light painting, um, that's a huge time saver when you're looking at how, how long it takes to create images um, out there for you know, star trails um, and the locations where you can get it. So that is an update that a firmware update that is coming to this camera. Um, it's not going to be available at launch, but we do have some other cameras that have it as well. Uh, and then from a stills perspective, you look at a lot of the cameras and I guess the, the, the question I would ask is what, what features really are majorly missing from a stills camera? Um, with the caveat knowing that things like burst rate and buffer rate and stuff like that are typically always hardware related uh, as far as what can be done, that kind of stuff. Um, we always love hearing the feedback as to what, what from a photography perspective, photographers are looking for in some cameras. Um, cool. So let's continue with some of these questions. Uh, any live stream will obviously be a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but can you stream other aspect ratios and letterbox them? If so, can a live stream with anamorphic lenses be de-squeezed and letterboxed? Unfortunately, no. Um, since the cameras, we do have a de-squeeze option for anamorphic lenses in the GH5 Mark II, but since, and they're actually expanded from what's in the GH5. So since, uh, since the camera isn't de-squeezing the footage in camera to record it, it's only doing it as a display. If you throw an anamorphic lens on the camera and you do a live stream with it, it's going to be squished. So if you're, say you're using one of those, the say like the Suryu anamorphics, um, it'll be a squished 16 by 9 image or a 4 by 3 image if you're looking at it. Um, so it doesn't really work that way. Um, I wish it did, but it doesn't. Uh, what picture profiles can you stream in? Can you stream in V-Log with a color profile applied? Uh, if you select V-Log, you will be actually sending out in the flat V-Log. And then add on top of that the compression that happens with YouTube or Twitch streaming. So not advised to stream in V-Log. Um, it's more advised to stream in uh, like 709, stuff like that. That would be a better profile to, um, to kind of stream in. That's what we stream in because it fits closer to uh, how it looks on YouTube versus what I'm seeing here on my screen. Uh, if I connect a GH5 Mark II to my iPhone, iPad using USB-C uh, cable, can I control the camera and transfer images with the image app even if there's no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? Unfortunately, no. Uh, can you swap batteries while USB-C power without interrupting the ongoing recording or, or live stream? Unfortunately, no. Um, it's a dual system, so you do have to have the battery installed if you're running USB-C. But the benefit there is that if you're using a uh, USB-C charging brick, which of course mine's not right in front of me, USB-C charging and power delivery is part of the GH5 Mark II's changes from the original. That means that you're able to actually deliver power while charging the battery uh, all at the same time. You just have to make sure that you're using a 9 volt, 3 amp compatible USB-C PD charger. So look at the output uh, ratings on that charger and make sure you see 9 volt, 3 amp. If you're doing that, the battery is always going to be charged up so that when the power brick dies, you could just unpull that, plug it in, and there you go. Uh, let's go back to some of the live questions here. Is it possible to get Live View Composite time lapse video? I can see Live View Composite as it happens on camera display, but captures a time-lapse uh, video file. It is doable. Uh, I have done it. I've also done high-resolution live um, time-lapses, but not using our internal time-lapse mode. You do have to use an external trigger to do this. So like one of the older style, plug it in and set your exposure and then set the duration on the trigger. You can theoretically do it. Um, it's just really involved to do it. Um, there's no automated system for it uh, in, in the camera. So, But it's a good idea, FC. John says, will the expanded anamorphic D-squeeze come to either the GH5 or GH5S? I do not think the GH5 can do the other D-squeezes. I think that is part of the other processing changes that went in with the GH5 Mark II. Uh, and the GH5S, I have to double check. I think the GH5S had additional de-squeeze options compared to the original GH5. And of course, I don't have a battery in the camera. 
So I can check on that for you. Uh, is high resolution mode available on the GH5 Mark II? Unfortunately, it's not. It is something that we have asked for. I know the question that I asked before to every, or I posed to everybody here was like, you know, what, what photography features do you think are missing? Um, that is definitely something that we have been asking for. Um, Matt Frazier and I, and I know a number of others is if we can do high resolution mode in the camera, I would love to see it in this camera. Um, but unfortunately I don't know if it's, if, um, if it's going to be able to do it, because some of that also depends on sensors. Some of it also depends on stabilizer that's used in the camera. Um, not to make excuses, but I, I just don't have a clear answer on that one yet. Uh, also make sure you get a USB-C cable that can handle the wattage. Correct. Um, typically the USB-C cables that you get like in a bargain bin at a checkout counter at a store, don't trust those. Um, the cable that we provide with the cameras um, so the GH5 Mark II is going to have the external charger and the cable and a wall adapter included with it. The cables that we provide with the camera do support this stuff. Uh, and the really kind of beefy over-the-top USB-C to C cable that we sell with or that we provide with the S-series cameras, that will uh, work really, really great too. Um... Let's see the other question. Can you reiterate price, body only, and kits? Yes. So in the United States, um, oh, hey, Nick. Fortunately, I, I don't have the UK pricing or the overseas pricing, but I have the US pricing uh, right off right off hand right now. So I apologize, but I can give you the US models. Uh, in the United States, the GH5 Mark II will be sold two variants. You'll have the body only as well as the L kit. Uh, the L indicates that it is coming with the Leica 12 to 60 2.8 to f4. In some other regions, uh, you can find an M kit, which is the 12 to 60 uh, 3.5 to 5.6. So that's the Lumix lens. Usually, there's a little bit of a dollar uh, value difference between all of these different kits. Uh, but in the the body only is going to be 1699 99 US, and then for um, the kit, let me pull up my price list here. Uh, you'd think I have this stuff memorized by now. Uh, the 12 to 60 millimeter kit is going to go for $22.99.99 uh, in the United States. So uh, that M kit, I'm not sure, but if you check your local Panasonic site, you'll be able to get what your local pricing is. I apologize that I don't have the ability to do the off-the-cuff price conversions uh, for everybody, sorry. Uh, cool. So, let me see if I can get one of my setups here. Uh, Keith asks, could you hot swap one of the batteries in the DMW BGGH5 battery grip and would it work with the GH5 Mark II? So the battery grip does work with the GH5 Mark II. It's the same battery grip, same chassis, same accessories are all going to work with it. Uh, and because of that, that means that you can't hot swap the battery in the grip. Uh, the grip doesn't have the sensor that we need uh, to be able to tell when you open the door that it's sending it up. So unfortunately, that's not something that you're going to be able to do with it. Um, let's see here. I'm going to pull this camera. Sorry, as I'm talking away from the camera, I'm, I swear I'm going to try to get better at that. So I'm going to hook up my BGH1 here. Uh, which I just realized I have not actually set up right. So we're going to skip that part. Um, one of the things I wanted to show everybody uh, is actually how this camera does the live streaming uh, functionality. So how does that actually work? And why is it something that we're, you know, actually legitimately very excited about? Um, I can tell you that for for a lot of the stuff that I've been doing, um, it, it's been one of the kind of capabilities that I have legitimately been very excited about seeing added to this camera. Uh, and the reason for that is, well, maybe not all of us are going to actively use live streaming. Um, there, there's such a a big thing that happens when it becomes super easy to do. So let me get this set up here. Where did I just put my Mark II? There it is. Get my Mark II ready. 
and let me get this set up here. So, uh, it would also help if I'm not set up on raw out on my BGH1. There we go. Cool. All right. Am I in vlog? This is always that fun part of as I'm jumping around changing a bunch of stuff, it's not always set up right. So, all right. There we go. So here's the, the app. What you're going to see here, so I have my GH5 Mark II. I've got the app connected over Bluetooth. And what you're going to be able to do with this is when you connect them over Bluetooth, so you have them linked together, you're going to be able to tap on Others now. And this is going to give you the live streaming and the camera copy settings. So we just shifted a couple little things in this menu. So when I tap Live Streaming, you're going to see the option to do stream with Facebook, stream with YouTube, or stream with RTMP, RTMPS. This is where the big difference is with all of this stuff. So I'm going to tap stream with Facebook because, um, one, I don't want you all seeing my email addresses since it pops up. Um, that's what our Lumix Live at us.panasonic email address is for. Uh, so you'll see that this pulls in my the Facebook account that I use online that I interact with a lot of you guys on Facebook within. So that's Sean at Lumix. From below that is where you're going to see your Wi-Fi connections. So if you want to stream and live broadcast with this, but do it out in the field, away from, say, a home wireless network, you're going to select your phone's mobile hotspot or an external just kind of hotspot that you may have. So for a casual to semi-advanced uh, streamer, this is more than enough. I already can tell in the chat that some people are massively going to be bringing up, yeah, but you don't have the option for, say, bonded uh, uh, networks and all that kind of stuff for out. Um, true, uh, but there are updates coming that are going to, like we talked about, the uh, USB LAN connection that you're going to be able to do to go from the camera direct into your mobile device that are, I think, going to kind of mitigate some of those challenges. So you would select the hotspot location here. In this case, I mean, I'm in my apartment. I'm in a basically concrete and cinder block, that kind of setup. So it's kind of a headache for cell service, but uh, I can select my home network here. Below that, I can tap all of the different frame rate options and bit rates that are available uh, as of today. So we've got up to 16 megabit per second, 1080, 60 frames per second, all the way down to 720p at 30 frames and 4 megabit per second. So if you're doing something like sending out to Facebook and you know, you're know you not a registered content creator on Facebook, that's what the two 720p options are for. Uh, you can do 720p 60 and that outputs directly to what um, basically what Facebook's looking for. But if you have a really solid connection, you can do that 16 megabit per second, 1080, 60. Below this is where you can set your privacy settings. So only me, friends, or just set it to public. And then you also have the option below that for your title and description. Once you have that stuff set up, so let's just throw a title in here. Let's just put a letter in. Once that's done, all you're going to do is just tap set to camera. Once that's set to camera, what it's going to do is prompt you uh, in our in the development version of the app that I have, since obviously it's not publicly released. I get some different uh, notices. Uh, what this does is it reaches out to the platform that you're sending it to, says, hey, I need to do a live stream. Get me the RTMP link and get me the stream key that I need to bring back. Then what it does is it collects that information, inputs it over into the camera, and tells the camera, hey, this is the network that you need to be connected to. So it triggers the Wi-Fi connection on the camera. It inputs the RTMP URL as well as the stream key onto the camera. And then now they're totally standalone. You don't need the app to do anything else if you don't want to. From here, I can just tap start recording uh, or start streaming and it will start broadcasting out to, uh, in this case, it would start broadcasting out to my Facebook page. Uh, and... I'd be all set and ready to go. The cool thing with this, and I will rotate this so that you guys can see it, is I've got the the camera set up here. Now, if I tap start streaming, 
Obviously, you guys aren't going to be able to see this because it's on a private stream. But what you'll see is that I have a blue, uh, blue frame indicator now. I have the icon in the corner here that tells me, hey, I'm actually streaming and you're all set to go. It makes it a really, really solid, quick way to get out into broadcasting online. So, that's a very simplified rundown of the actual streaming with it. And the cool thing is, at the end of June, weather depending, um, the goal is to be able to do a uh, stream actually out away from here. Um, let's see here. What other questions do we got? Uh, if you have batteries in the grip, will they charge if there's a power coming over USB? Yes, they will. Uh, can I see live chat from YouTube in the Lumix Sync app? Unfortunately, no. Um, the app is designed to be standalone. That means that all the app is doing is collecting the necessary information, sending it to the camera so that it is a totally standalone operation. This means that for some reason, say the app, um, say we come out with a new version of the app and an old version is no longer supported or something like that, if there's a new OS change. It means that you're not locked with a previous version that then may not get support. Um, it can Everything I just did can be manually done on the camera as well, so you don't have to use an app. It just makes it a lot easier these, uh, these days. Let's see here. Um, what are the questions we got? Really? Uh, okay, so you guys... Uh, which camera am I using for the shot of the phone? That is my BGH1. Um, very... Very weirdly set up because I don't have the right uh, uh, tripod head on this one. So, let's hear. Alan's asking, it really is great live streaming, especially if you pair it with a cloud mixer. Yeah, there are there are so many really cool things that are going to come from being able to do the, the live streaming with this. I think that kind of rounds some of that point that a lot of people have had is, well, why does this camera exist compared to a GH6? You know, the GH6 is going to have so many more features. I've mentioned this a couple of times so far. Um, I think when we start talking about uh, some of the, the frustration I know that photographers are having with, with how much we talk about video. I know, um, you know, the, the comment I see in there from Christopher. I feel you. There are a lot of things that we talk about when it comes to video. Video is truthfully in the industry, in, in every aspect of it. Video is the current number one thing that is being asked for. And it is the area that can have the largest uh, leaps and bounds forward when it comes to technology. The cool thing with this is that um, the technologies and everything that's being developed on the video side do have effects for the still shooters. The, you know, things like with the G9, the fact that we're able to take the video idea in 4K photo, 6K photo, stuff like that, and bring it back in and just kind of mold it into a photography tool. That's the kind of stuff that kind of helps there. When you look at Live View Composite, theoretically, if you think about it, it's a kind of blended method of photography and videography because you're doing multiple images in sequence to output a final product. Now, that's a bit of a stretch when it comes to photography and videography, but it, it basically kind of... Everything that's being done in videography helps with photography. And as the tech improves on the videography side, you're going to start seeing more benefits on the photography side as time goes on. Uh, Albert is asking, are there live stream tutorials on this? Uh, there are live stream tutorials on this Lumix. Okay. No, that was just a comment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where, where that live stream is. I wanted to make sure I got that one across for you guys. Um, some of the other questions that we got here, uh, can you use a DCC coupler while also powering over USB-C? Um, I have not checked. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Truthfully, I can't see a huge benefit in DCC couplers anymore these days. For certain applications, 100% yes, I can see that. You know, if you're connecting into, say, like a V-mount battery or something like that, um, a DCC coupler, and that's the battery delete couplers, um, would be a big benefit. There is a newer one for the GH5 Mark II because it's based on the BLK22 battery. So that's the new battery that we're using. Um, so that's this battery. Uh, so it's ideal to get the one that's designed for this battery because if you've ever used 
uh, the DCC adapters and maybe used the wrong AC uh, plug for it, you notice that certain things you do on the camera could just shut it off because you overcurrent or uh, overdraw from the power supply. So I would make sure you want to use the correct DCC adapter if you're going to be using it. Um, let's see here. Uh, FC is asking, is wireless link fast enough to stream ProRes RAW or B-RAW instead of HDMI? Uh, no, I don't think so. Wireless links are not, not the best for that. Um, let's see here. Keith's asking, Ari Couplers, if the USB connect isn't, can, is that, if the USB connection is in use for streaming, this might supply power. That would be a good point. That would be a really nice thing to be able to do. Um, using, uh, when we have the firmware update that supports USB-C, um, the USB-C extended functionalities with it, uh, that is where a uh, DCC coupler would come in handy. Uh, and Charbax, it's been a long time since I've seen you here. Says, does Type-C gigabit Ethernet dongle mean this becomes IP multicam option? What's the best multicam mixer for that? Should I be in the cloud like live streaming studio? So I don't have 100% information as far as what the USB-C LAN uh, update's going to be. I don't know if it's gigabit. I don't know what any of that stuff is yet. Um, just because I haven't seen it. But, um... What we've been able to say is that it's going to be able to do an RTM, an RTSP feed, just like the BGH1 camera does. So that's like how I have this camera powered right now is off um, RTSP. I am using Ethernet or um, HDMI on this, so I can make sure all my audio is synced because RTSP has a slight different audio delay than HDMI does. But uh, you'd be able to do that kind of stuff. Um, can't stream in live 4K. Uh, no, uh, live stream will be in 1080 60p. 4k live streaming takes way too much bandwidth. Let's see here. Uh, Alan's asking, will the GH5 Mark II be supported in tether for multicam? No idea yet. Uh, it's still a little too early as far as whether the, what that whole support's actually going to be. Um, in theory, we believe it's going to be similar to a BGH1, but that does not mean that the multicam app's going to support it as well. Uh, we will find out more as we go on. Uh, another question we had here is, can I live stream the camera's OSD or menus, etc., just, or is it just image capture on the sensor that would be useful for doing streams about the camera itself? Uh, the live streaming is only the image. It's not going to be able to send over the OSD or the menus. I would love if that's a possibility, but I can also imagine the headaches that I would get in emails of people who um, are having issues because the menus are outputting while live streaming. Um, which is a good thing because that would mean a ton of people are using it. But yeah, it's just sending out the image from the camera. No, no UI. Uh, does it support Wi-Fi 6? What Wi-Fi standard does it support? WPA3? Uh, it's not Wi-Fi 6. I know that. I don't think any camera is Wi-Fi 6. Well, in our world, cameras aren't Wi-Fi 6. Um, I don't exactly know what the standard is for it, but we can take a look and see that. Uh, see for that. Still open question. <laughs> AF and VFR in the C4 on top of the dial. Yes. So there are a couple of the other uh, open questions that we saw here. So let me jump back over here and let's take a look and see if I can get my image set up here. So when we're looking at the top of the um, uh, GH5 Mark II... I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the question here. GH6, Wi-Fi 6, lol? No, there's nothing confirmed about any of that stuff. There's just no camera that has Wi-Fi 6 enabled in it. Sometimes you guys read way too much into, into things that get said. Um, unless that was just a joke. If that's a joke, cool. Um, so on the some of the other slight little differences here that you see on um, the GH5 Mark II is that you now have four custom settings on the top here. So you have C1 through C4. Minor little change just makes it a little bit easier for, uh, you know, custom settings. Uh, the important thing to note about using custom settings on these cameras is make sure that you are putting the camera in the mode that you want to have saved for C1 through C4 or whatever. You have to be in the mode that you want to have it set up at for when you save it to those settings so that it doesn't reset every time you turn the camera off or change uh, between settings. That's how custom settings work. 
The other uh, question here was about the AF and VR, so or VFR. So the GH5 Mark II does now support not full-time AF in variable frame rate, but it allows you to use uh, push a uh, push button AF uh, before you start recording. So instead of having to use manual focus like you have to do in the previous iterations, you are able to now press the AF on button uh, or tap the AF button on the screen, have it focus into the point, and then when you click record, it's into manual focus at that point. So you've got a, a bit of a difference there. Okay, it's a joke. Okay, good. <laughs> um, this is a big one. This is a big question we've always gotten with, with uh, cameras, and it's interesting that it came up on the GH5 Mark II. Uh, can you use Bluetooth slash wireless headphones to monitor the audio on a GH5 Mark II? Uh, not natively. Uh, Bluetooth still has too much latency. Um, and cameras typically are not deploying, um, you know, low latency or any kind of advanced Bluetooth modules like that. Uh, so as my understanding is, you're probably not going to see in a camera, uh, from a major manufacturer, you're probably not going to see anything like that because I believe that those are also relatively very expensive to, uh, to work with. Uh, and I think those might even be like the... Uh, Bluetooth low, low latency, I think, is a Qualcomm technology. So unfortunately, it's just not in here. These cameras use uh, these use the Venus engine, which is our our processor in our development. So, uh, can the old uh, BTC10 charger charge the newer battery? This is the other major point that gets asked a lot. So, if you've got BLF19s, so the previous battery. The GH5 Mark II does take those batteries, so you can still use your BLF19 batteries in the new camera. You can use the BLK22, the new battery, in your GH5, your GH5S, or your G9. 100%. They will work. Um, caveat, make sure you've got your firmware updated on the G9, GH5S, or the GH5. We did an update last year that added support for these when the uh, S5 came out. The charger, the original charger for the GH5, the GH5S, and the G9 will not support these batteries. It's not because of a pin out or anything like that. It's because if you look on the side of the battery, we don't have the um, sled locking points on this battery because there had to be a slight uh, design change in it uh, to accommodate the fact that it's a little bit higher milliamp hour. So the original chargers don't support the new battery, but the new charger that you get with the GH5 Mark II or the S5 charges the old batteries. So if you have those old uh, chargers, uh, can I use the new battery on my GH4? I do not know. Um, we have not added or stated compatibility with a GH4. It's GH5 and newer. Um... Where was I? Yeah, so the new battery charger, it's a drop-in style that still charges using the main pins here. These top pins are for the S5. So you're still charging on these pins for the GH5 Mark II or GH5s. So you would have to drop it in like that and charge that way uh, with those batteries. So I highly encourage if you need a new charger, um, you can get the new one. Uh, it's a USB-C uh, plug into the back of it. So a USB-C power bank can also charge it. Um, and it's, it's just a better charger now. And the last, uh, the last question over here I addressed at the beginning was about the pre-order incentives. Um, so there's a ton of different options out there in different regions, uh, in the United States, uh, instead of, uh, the platinum service, uh, incentive that we're doing with it, uh, does that service only apply to the GH5 Mark II or can it be used for service of other Linux products? Um, you, you just get into the program if you pre-order a GH5 Mark II in the United States. So, um, once you get into it, uh, get your cameras registered on it. Uh, and then basically it's the, the fee is paid for the first year. Um, so yeah, that covers, that covers those questions. And I actually, I think Scott, you were in here. So, uh, hopefully I got your questions answered. Let's see here. Uh, what other questions do we do we have in here? We've got we got a couple more minutes. Um, oh yes, the firmware updates. 
man, I'm, I'm getting to all of this stuff here. So, uh, the firmware updates that are coming for the GH5S and the G9, they are still some pretty solid updates, especially for the GH5S. GH5S is going to be getting raw over HDMI, so similar to what we do with the BGH1. What that means is that you're going to be able to get, excuse me, what that means is that you're going to be able to get um, 4K anamorphic, uh, sorry, not 4K anamorphic, 4K cinema, so that's a 17 by 9 aspect ratio, in 4096 by 2160 up to 60 frames per second. You're also going to get 2997 as well as 2398 in a 17 by 9 aspect ratio, so 4096 by 2160. You'll also get 3.7K anamorphic, so that is the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and that's going to be at 3680 by 2760 up to 60 frames per second. Now, this is raw out over HDMI to the Atomos Ninja 5, so it will be in the uh, ProRes RAW variant of RAW qualities that are out there these days. Uh, and that means also that it's going to be 12-bit, because that's what, what is out over HDMI for those. So you get, um, you get that uh, uh, level of RAW over HDMI from the GH5S. The G9 gets the autofocus updates that have been added in with the GH5 Mark II. I didn't really touch on them a lot here, but basically it's the S5 autofocusing uh, improvements that we've made uh, fit in with the new processor and everything that's in the, the GH5 Mark II. It's another one of those reasons why we haven't been able to do that on a GH5. It just didn't have the hardware to do it. Uh, so the GH5 Mark II the GH5S and the G9 are all up onto the newer setups for uh, the uh, focusing system that we have. So the faster refresh rate of the newer sensors, uh, smaller sensors means that it typically just pushes much faster data throughout. So, um, yeah. Uh, yes, the other updates there with the G9 is that, uh, well, the G9 and the GH5S is that they're going to get the red frame record indicator. So that's where the you get the red outline around the rear screen. They're also going to be getting the um, frame markers that we have on cam like the S series cameras and the BGH1. So that means you're going to get like, uh, I know a lot of people have been like taping on a GH5S or on a G9, you tape your screen so you can get frame markers. Uh, this means that we're going to be adding a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, and then, what was the other update? Uh, the vertical position information as well. So that means if I am shooting and I start my recording like this, that, that footage can be triggered to be tagged that way. So when I bring it into my uh, editor, it's actually vertical. Or if I start my recording like this, it records that way. Uh, someone on Facebook brought up, uh, actually really important. It say you forget to turn that feature off in the camera and you're on a gimbal. Uh, if you start the recording this way and then say you rotate the camera this way, your footage is not being re-encoded to go vertical. Uh, that happens before, you, like when you first hit the record button. So you don't have to worry too much about that, but you have an option to be able to go into the menu and disable that if you do not want it. Uh, all right, let's see. What other questions or comments we got in the chat? I see you guys got a whole side conversation going on here. Uh, some more comments about a GH6, but I don't have answers for that stuff. Uh, who wants internal raw? Uh, look, everyone wants internal raw. Unfortunately, I have no information about whether, you know, what, what internal raw would be, if it's even possible, what the deal is with any of that stuff. So I, I wish I had more info for you. Um, G9 updates, uh, covered them. Uh, let's see here. What about the AF updates for the G9? I'm certain that it was mentioned in the release notes. Yeah, so the the I mentioned it a little bit before. The G9 gets... Basically, the G9 and the GH5S are being updated to the same uh, AF system and the updates that we created on the S5, which we then brought to the S1, S1R, S1H. Uh, so you're getting a pretty big jump up uh, from with those two cameras uh, from what they had 
before. Um, will I be able to see an indication as to whether vertical or horizontal video mode? There isn't, but that's a good good point, and I will make sure to highlight that, actually, as if there's a way to trigger when that's going to happen. Um, so basically, you would be able to just go in and tell it, in that case, you just probably don't want it on. Um, let's see here. What other questions we got? That looks pretty good on question-wise. Um, Lynn's, okay, this is a good question. Lynn's asking, will the raw update work with the 24 hertz mode? With the, uh, uh, with raw over HDMI. Um, so none of the cameras that I know in the industry at all, um, ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW in the S1H, uh, none of them support 24 hertz um, because it's not a common HDMI uh, frame rate. So I don't think that it supports it, but not because of any uh, ill content. I think it's just the fact that the HDMI spec in how raw over HDMI is sent, since it's sent out as a data, it still has to fit within the accepted frame rates. Um, so that's why uh, it doesn't support that setup. Uh, can you swap lenses while the camera is live streaming? I have not tested it. Uh, I don't see why not unless it triggers the camera to stop recording. If it triggers the camera to stop recording, you can't. Uh, I can do a couple of tests on that and then, um, we can follow up next week about it. Uh, what other questions? Why still micro four thirds? Because we're devoted to micro four thirds and full frame. Uh, micro four thirds has a ton of advantages um, technology wise over a lot of APS-C and full frame sensor technologies that are out there. Typically you can get faster readouts, um, from the sensor. You can typically get, um, more functionality, higher frame rate with, uh, higher resolution combinations than you can in, in larger sensors because of those much faster frame rates. Um, so there's, there's a technological advantage. There's also the other advantage that there are a ton of situations where you don't want to be shooting ultra shallow depth of field or, um, you know, having to deal with the way the high end, uh, full frame sensors render an image for the style you're going for. Um, yes, there is a big push for that ultra shallow depth of field. Look, we tried it here on Lumix live for a while. And the truth is if you're doing something like a live broadcast like this, that we do every single week, uh, it gets rather annoying to look at after a while. Um, so not really, you know, looking at, at what you're trying to shoot can determine what camera really fits best for your style. That's why we have Micro Four Thirds. It lets us really push newer technologies forward uh, that can only be done in a Micro Four Thirds platform. Uh, and then as uh, Leg Animations comments too, in-body image stabilizer has a huge advantage in Micro Four Thirds over full frame. Um, I would argue that while our S1H, our S1, and our S1R are rated to seven stops of, of uh, stabilization, when you're using dual IS on the full frame system, I still would argue that the GH5 Mark II or a G9, the stabilizer in these cameras, I think is still, is still top of the class. I still think you've got uh, more flexibility with stabilization in micro four thirds than you have on a full frame sensor. It's smaller sensor, less weight. Um, there's more room to move uh, components around. So you get a, a better experience in those areas. Um, let's see here. Uh, there were a couple other questions in here that weren't tagged with that Lumix camera that I did want to get to, but I can't find them because they're not tagged with Lumix at Lumix cameras. So I don't see them. Uh, one of them here, Lumix S5 firmware updates. Lumix S5 just got a really wicked update. Things come in time. Takes a little bit. Um, let's see here. That was the raw conversation we had. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Um, I'll look to see, take one or two more questions and then we're going to call it. Cause this is actually a really long episode and I apologize, but if everyone keeps asking questions, I'll keep, I'll keep answering them. 
Um, normally we always try to keep these things just to, you know, about an hour. Uh, but yeah, kind of looks like we got some, some good, uh, questions here. Sacred City, New York City. What are the best cameras ever and why are they all Lumix? Oh, and that one Ari. Ah, yeah, yeah, you know. Um, Charbax, that question, that comment. No, man, like, seriously? <laughs> Do you believe... <laughs> All right, N now I can't tell if, if some of these questions are, are just uh, uh, due to my own, the way I phrased that question here. Uh, is there a link for specs and date of the new firmware update? Yes, there is. Uh, let me uh, pull some of that stuff up here. Uh, I actually did pull up some of it here. Uh, we have an entire set of, uh, we have an entire page here on our global site that is uh, showing you guys all the content and everything that's come out about the uh, GH5 Mark II as well as some of the firmware updates. So, uh, of course, my computer is not going to let me uh, copy and paste the link here for some reason. So, what's the name of that site? Uh, GH5 Mark II. Pull up the page for you all. So, this is the main landing page here. We just dropped that in the chat for everybody. And then, uh, like we said, we've got the firmware updates coming, which I will link right here. So those are the two main uh, updates for everything there. So uh, let's see here. I had to step out a bit. Did you answer a question about the FZ2500 updates? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any information on FZ2500, uh, if there's going to be updates or what the status is of that stuff. I apologize. Um is the GH5 Mark II color science same to the G9? That's a really good question. GH5 Mark II's color science adapts uh, what we've done in the S series, or more specifically, what we've done in the S1H. So that means that you're going to get Cinelike D2 and Cinelike V2 color profiles. Uh, these are uh, much more in line with the Vericam, the Evo 1, um, the S1H, obviously. Uh, and like cameras like the BGH1. So there is a difference in color profile between the GH5 and the GH5 Mark II and even the G9 and the other cameras. So there are differences there. Um, let's see if we've got any other questions here. I do have to end this uh, in one more minute here. What was it? Hello from the Dominican Republic. Thank you guys for providing an outst outstanding cameras. Well, you're welcome, KLG. Uh, cool. All right. I think that pretty much covers the vast majority of stuff that I wanted to cover. Alan's question, GH7 release date? Wow. <laughs> I saw a number of those comments online about, you know, hey, who cares about this? We want the next thing. That's just how the industry works, isn't it? Well, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to uh, to to join us here. This is this stuff is always super fun to do. I know sometimes we get maybe a little sidetracked on some of the conversations. Uh, it's always tough, but I I always come into these things with a plan of you know at least a couple of core things that I want to show you guys and kind of you know make sure you guys kind of hopefully understand and hopefully after the conversation we just had today with the questions that you guys all asked. Hopefully it gives you a little bit better of an understanding of what the GH5 Mark II is designed for and where it really is going to sit. I know I didn't talk much about a GH6 and, you know, what we announced with that camera. But know that there are going to be some very big differences between these cameras. Um, it allows us to be able to keep continuing a GH5 camera. It helps us keep getting a camera that you know... When it comes time, if you want to be able to get an updated camera, you want to be able to replace your GH5 after its long time in service, you know that you can get a camera that means your rigs, your accessories, your, um, you know, the underwater housings, all that kind of stuff is going to be fully compatible on this camera. But now you've got a platform that's going to be able to continue even further with future firmware updates. Uh, so it really, it really is just an extension. 
Uh, and I am super excited to see what the GH6 brings for everybody uh, as we release more information about that over the coming, uh, well, throughout this year. As you said, that camera is slated to come out by the end of 2021, so it's going to be a very, very exciting time this year. Um, with that, as a reminder, Lumix Pro Services is available in a number of countries across the globe. In the United States, we have our red tier and our platinum tier. Uh, these are our pro service pla uh, programs designed to support creators and photographers like you, F creators, photographers, and videographers like all of you. So this is going to be a super awesome program for people that are really demanding of your equipment. If you're someone in the United States who pre-orders the camera, know that we've got a promotion going on that ties in the Lumix Pro service, so check out your authorized uh, Lumix dealer here in the United States. Other regions got some other programs running on, so make sure to check out your local dealers, uh, your local photo uh, photo retailer stores, and uh, check, a, check out what, what they've got going on with the cameras. Um, it's going to be an awesome time. Throughout the next uh, couple of weeks here on Lumix Live, we're going to actually be talking with the filmmakers that created the three launch pieces for the GH5 Mark II. So we're going to have uh, Emily Sky, Griffin Hammond, uh, and we're going to have Matthew Sutherland on this month uh, each week. And we're going to be talking about their projects, get you guys, uh, you know, some some insight into who they are if you've never met them before, uh, and give everyone an opportunity to ask them questions about their shooting experiences. It's one thing for you all to hear from me, a person who works for the company, is employed by the company, uh, to hear me gush about these cameras, but I wouldn't work for the company if I didn't enjoy and love the products that we sell. Uh, so you'll get an opportunity to talk to the filmmakers. And then the last... Uh, Last week of June, weather depending, uh, we'll, uh, the idea is to take the GH5 Mark II out into the streets of Austin, Texas here and do a live streaming broadcast uh, live from the camera uh, with our, ambas our local ambassador, Todd White, uh, and actually kind of do a whole thing out and show you guys the actual live streaming functionality, what can be done with it. So I hope uh, everyone tunes in for those throughout this month. Uh, as always, if you have questions for us and you want to get, um, you know, suggestions for future topics, uh, make sure to shoot an email to us at lumixlive at us.panasonic.com. It'll be in the end card, uh, so you'll be able to, to uh, uh, shoot us some information there. And as always, uh, we're going to have a ton more information coming out over the time, so make sure... You guys uh, get yourself registered on the email list, get yourself subscribed, like uh, our channel. Uh, it helps me out tremendously to keep bringing this kind of stuff to you guys. Uh, and I, I love having these conversations. So with that, thank you, everybody. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and an awesome weekend. And I will see everybody next Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern time right here on YouTube. See you next week.